All right, we're going to do an experiment. What I'd like you to see is I have three charts up here. Now, you're a space explorer, and you come to this inhabited planet, and as you step out of the spaceship, you're greeted by this crazy alien monster that tries to attack one of your, sh uh, your crewmates. Um, and aside from running, you decide, you know, let's study it while we run. I don't know how that works, but somehow you manage it. And so you turn around and you start studying the monster, and what you notice is that uh, there's little baby these monsters, and here's what you discover. From the time they're born, they're born about one foot tall. All right? So, and what you also know is, uh, is that they grow uh, pretty consistently. They um, double in size every hour. So it's a pretty fast growing monster. Um, that's part of my nightmares anyway. So uh, let's create a table. We'll want to see if we can create some sort of math representation, some way to understand how this monster is growing and maybe figure out after how many hours, maybe even 24 hours, how tall will this monster be? All right. So after one hour, so our, our time over here is represented one hour. After one hour, the height of the monster should double, so that is now two feet tall. Okay, that's not so bad. It's not quite intimidating. So I got some time here. After two hours, it should double again. That is four feet tall. Um, still not so, not so scary. He's only four feet tall. I can handle that. But after three hours, that monster is eight feet tall. Okay, now it's taller than me, so I'm, I'm pretty scared. Now, four hours, he's 16 feet tall. That is taller than this room. Um, so I'm pretty frightened right now. This is five hours. He's 32 feet tall. Um, there is no way I'm getting away from that monster. I'm going to hide in the rock and hope he doesn't find me. But if you notice, he, it's doubling every time. Now there is a way to represent this, um, and we'll try to find a different way to uh, find a different way that can, can consolidate all this information. Okay. So if you notice this pattern right here, what we're doing every time is we're multiplying by two. Okay. Multiplying by two, multiplying by two, multiplying by two. All right. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question: Is this a geometric or arithmetic sequence? We talked about this in class, right? Because we're repeatedly multiplying by two. This is a geometric sequence. I'm using the right hand. Look, geometric sequence, geometric sequence. And because we're multiplying by two. Two is going to be our common ratio. Common ratio. All right. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, check this out. On, at zero time, all right, at zero time, I have one foot. Well, that doesn't make too much sense now, so we're going to skip it. At one hour, I have two feet. So that's two feet. At two hours, I have four feet. Well, I know that four is two times two. I'm taking a shot in the dark because I want to show you something. All right, watch this. Two, two times two. All right, well, that's two hours, so I have two twos. Okay, that's interesting. But three hours, that's eight feet. Well, eight is actually two times two times two. Okay? Three hours, three twos. That's interesting. All right, well, four is... At four hours, I got 16 feet. Well, again, that's two times two times two times two. Wait a second. Four hours, four twos. All right, look what's going on here. This could be rewritten as two to the one, two, three, fourth power. Okay? This could be rewritten as two to the third power. How about this one? Two to the second power. This one, two to the first power. Now look. If each of these exponential powers represents how much time has passed, how can I represent this first step? Well, I got two to the fourth, two to the third, two to the second, two to the first. How about two to the zero power? And if you did that in your calculator, or if you figured that out, and it actually equates to one. Anything to the zero power is one. That's pretty handy. As a matter of fact, I will skip all this right here and say, all right, at the fifth hour, that would be represented as 2 to the fifth power. If you type that in, you would find it's 32. That's pretty crazy, right? Look at some of the patterns that are going on here. 
this geometric ratio, or this common ratio from this geometric sequence is the base of my exponent. The time that is passed is the exponent. And this simple formula represents the height of my monster at any given time. So I could plug in 2 to the 24th power and find out how tall that monster is in 24 hours. It makes me scared. I kind of don't want to do it, but it would be a really big number. Uh, it's probably the size of the planet. Um, I don't know, and I don't really want to find out. It's maybe not the size of it. Maybe it would be crater. So, how about this? You come across another species of monster. This one is vegetarian, so it's not going to harm you. Um, so you're able to study it a little bit closer. Now you find out that this particular monster is born at four feet. All right, that poor monster mom. All right, well that's about 12 inches. So let's continue this pattern on here and see what happens. Um, I failed to mention this. Uh, this particular monster, uh, it triples in size every hour. So in one hour, we got 36 inches or 12 inches, uh, or 12 feet, excuse me. In two hours, uh, we're going to have, all right, so that one, I'm not going to do that in my head too quickly. So we're going to go here. 12 times 3, that's 36. Ah, oh, not bad. Um, how much is that in inches? Um, I'm going to use the calculator and find that later because I don't want to use too much time trying to figure out my head. How about 3? Three, uh, 3 hours. Well, I guess i got to use, i got to triple that now. Well, that's all right. So what is that, 90? 108? Okay, so that's how many inches this was over here, 108 inches. But this is 108 feet. All right, so I'm tripling that. Um, let's find this one. Four hours, this triples again. So it's 300, because I'm tripling that, and triple that, that's 24. 324 feet. All right, so that's quite interesting. So it triples. So let's try to find some way to understand how this works. Okay, so. Because I'm tripling every time, so this is times three, times three, times three, all right? Again, is this an arithmetic or geometric sequence? Well, I know it's geometric because I'm multiplying by three every time. So it's geometric. Okay, and then the common ratio, well, that's not too hard to find. That's the number of multiplying by every time. So that's three. Here we go. Three. Common ratio of three. So that's not too bad. Well, according to this pattern we found over here, that common ratio became the base of my exponential, or excuse me, yeah, my ex exponential function. All right. So, hold on, before I write on the equal sign. So to find the height of the monster at any given time, all right, at any given time, I take the common ratio as my base. Time is my exponent. Now, hold on a second. We've got to think about this a little bit more carefully. Because look, if I do 3 to the 0 power, wait, wait, that gets me 1. I need it to give me 4. All right, that doesn't work. Okay, let's try it. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can fix this. All right, well, if I get 3 to the first power, that gets me 3. 3 to the first power, because that's what time is, we get 3. All right, that's not working. This isn't working out very well, because that should be 12. All right, let's try one more. 3 to the second power, that gets me 9. Okay, I know that something's wrong, and I'm not. this does not work for this particular monster. So what can I do to fix it? Now, I'm going to introduce you an idea, something you may not have thought of, but... Um, Seeing this as often as I do, I did think of it. And here's where we go. How do I get that 1 to be 4? Well, what do I need to do to 3 so that it's 12? Well, what can I do to 9 so that it's 36? All of those have something in common. If I multiply 1 times 4, that's 4. How about 3 times 4? That's 12. Or 3 times 9, that's 36. So I can still use this, but I have to change it a little bit. I have to 
multiply by four every time in order for it to match up to my chart here. I now have an equation that works every time for this particular monster. And it looks very similar to what we did in our exponential form notes. All right, I have an equation that looks like y equals a for my coefficient times b to the x power, where a is this four coefficient and b is this base to my exponential power. All right, that works simple enough, but where does that four come from in my chart? And I'll tell you, it's always the initial value. That's what a is. A is, what did it start out when time was zero? Well, it's four feet. I could create an entirely different formula for this. Because it's still tripling every time, I would still use this as the base, and time is still my exponent. However, because I have a different initial value, I would have a different coefficient. Calculate the height of my monster in inches every time. All right? So, hopefully I did that right. Let me think. I don't think I did that right. Because how many inches are in four feet? 48. So this should actually be 48. But I'll humor you for a moment. And we'll say that these are monster inches. All right? So these are monster inches. So those are 12 monster inches in four monster feet. Okay? Way to correct myself, right? Well, I had another monster example we could use. And um, this monster actually changes 50%. So instead of doubling or tripling, I would increase it by 50%. So I would jump the gun and say, my common ratio here is 50%. And remember, we won't, we won't want to use percents when we're calculating, um, we're calculating the formulas. We're going to want to use decimals. So when we change the 50% into a decimal, so that would be 0 0.5. And <coughs> instead of using the common fat as our common ratio, okay, we would have to add it to B. This is more of a rate than a ratio. So I wouldn't use common ratio if they give me a percent. Instead, I would say this is our uh, growth rate. Okay? Because they used a percent. So the growth rate is 50% or 0.5. Because I'm now using a rate, we're going to refer back to the B of my formula is going to be 1 plus R, or the B is 1 minus R, depending on if it's growth or decay. And because this is growth, the B portion is going to be 1 plus 0 0.5 or 1.5. So that would be my new B, my new base. So 1.5 is my base. Time is still my variable for the exponent. And 50, it looks like, is my starting coefficient to get me to the height. So I didn't have to create my chart at all. I just composed it from all the different pieces of information that are given to me. The fact that the growth rate is 50%, used to turn into a decimal, use what I know about B, or the base of my exponential equation. The starting height is my coefficient. Um, and that creates my exponential function. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense how I can take a geometric sequence and turn it in to an exponential equation. And I'll try to do one more um, example on a separate video so it's a little shorter. Thank <laughs> you.